All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy for these round six footy tips. Most likely getting this up a little bit later. Uh, forgive me this week. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Did take a rat test this morning uh, and I'm all clear. I'm all good to go. So uh, no excuses. I'm just a bit of a wuss it seems. But today we're going to crack into Anzac round. Uh, so there's going to be quite an elongated round with two games on the Monday as well, uh, which is good. It's good to have stretched out footy. More, more footy days uh, is better for me. If you haven't seen it already, we did a power rankings video that I'm going to do every five rounds. I kept up that routine last year and I'm going to continue it this year where I sort of rank the teams 1 to 18 based on how well I rate them. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. It's the last upload on this channel. All in all, it seemed like it was a fairly uh, easy round of tips. I think everyone did well across the board uh, except myself. So I scored a uh, six out of nine tips almost getting my ballsy Port Adelaide tip correct uh, right down to the wire that game went. But uh, as it turns out, six was a pretty below par score. I dropped 50 rankings to 148. Uh, but interestingly, only one person got nine correct tips overall. So we will shout out the winner of round six, who is A Brown 21, the only person to score a perfect nine and a margin of 40. So well done, A Brown. And that means that the total leader is now someone called Creamy Jordan. And I uh, won't ask any questions about the origin of that name. Creamy Jordan has 34 correct tips with a margin of 67. So that is the two winners that we'll shout out this week. Well done to you lot. Uh, I am desperate to get back into the top 100. So I'm hoping this week is where I make my move. In terms of fantasy, James English is still absolutely tearing it up. For the second year in a row, he leads once again with his team Shuckers and an average score of 21.78. I'm pretty sure I haven't even scored 21.78 in a single round this year. I do suck at fantasy, but uh, I'm just trying, you know. I think I'm ranked 112th overall out of uh, maybe 200 odd, but uh, overall, well done, James English. You are absolutely killing it. Before we get into the actual tips, guys, I will shout out once again the sponsor of this YouTube channel, Manscaped.com, who are helping you level up your manscaping routine with a variety of you know liquid formulations to also complement their fourth generation lawnmower 4.0, which is a body hair trimmer, ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's really, really easy to use. It's got an LED light. It is waterproof as well, so you can use it in the shower. If you don't know too much about manscaping or that concept is somewhat new to you, go check out their website. You can see the variety of products that they actually offer. And if you go to that website, manscaped.com, you can use the code TRUEFOOTY20 and get 20% off and free shipping. So thank you to our sponsors. Let's get into the video. So here we are at the top of round six. Once again, using Squiggle, we have one undefeated team, Melbourne, and one winless team, Port Adelaide. Again, who would have seen that coming? 0-5. It's uh, They're probably on the border of uh, probably being out of the question for finals, but it's not completely written off when you consider Sydney back in 2017, but uh, they seriously need to get a wriggle on. Look at Fremantle in second there. Doesn't that just disgust you? That's gross. Uh, but an interesting looking ladder nonetheless, uh, with a few teams from last year's finals doing really, really poor. Port Adelaide, Essendon, GWS, uh, and the Bulldogs in 10th as well. All played finals last year. West Coast finished 9th. They're down to 16th. So it is a different looking ladder and it's starting to take shape a little bit. It's more of a reflection of uh, the actual quality of the teams that we've seen so far after five rounds. But anyway, let's get into the first game of the round. GWS versus St. Kilda. Giants were annihilated against the Melbourne Demons at the MCG, which is uh, often by itself not an indication of a poor team because of how good Melbourne are and they're really starting to build momentum themselves. But I've been critical on the Giants. I don't think they have lived up to expectation or at least the quality on their team. I think while there is a lot of youth there, there's a lot of established talent and there, there's something not right. Maybe it's synergy, maybe it's game plan. I'm not too sure. But overall, they sit one and four at 73% and that, uh, that's been a reflection of how average they've been. And St. Kilda, on the other hand, are four and one with a percentage of 132. And uh, since that round one game, they've come back and built some momentum really strongly, proving time and time again that they can score really well without having maybe as many inside 50s as you would expect for a team putting up such good scores. So as a result, this game's at Monica. Uh, it's a, not a true home game for the Giants, but regardless, St. Kilda are comfortably a better team, you'd have to say. And I wouldn't say the Giants are no chance of winning this because I think they're good enough to, to win any given game, really, and it wouldn't be too much of a shock. It's getting to the point where just can't back them in anymore. So St. Kilda, comfortable winners by 26 points. Another sort of neutral game with the Western Bulldogs hosting Adelaide at uh, what is Mars Stadium now. 
which is in Ballarat. So this is uh, kind of a game I think they've played regularly here at Ballarat, at least, or at least once or twice before this. Uh, the Bulldogs coming off a big win, maybe shook off a few cobwebs of the first month of the season with a big win over North Melbourne by 68 points. They've sort of put themselves in a position where they can't drop too many more winnable games. So they sit two and three currently, and they really, really need to have both eyes on this game against Adelaide, who were very good in their 19-point victory over Richmond on Saturday night at Adelaide Oval, with Tex Walker proving a handful for opposition teams uh, as he so often did last year. He's continued that this year. This game is winnable for Adelaide. They are good enough to upset the Bulldogs here. That being said, I think it would be a very brave man to tip an upset here, and it would be alarm bells for the Dogs uh, if they do drop this game. But I think Adelaide's good enough to test them but I still think the Bulldogs will get home by four goals in the end. Next up, we have a uh, Clash of the Titans, you could say. 18th versus 16th, a true blockbuster game on Saturday afternoon at Adelaide Oval. Port Adelaide, the winless Port Adelaide, against the West Coast Eagles. And both of these sides are making a claim for being some of the more disappointing teams this year, albeit uh, with some mitigating circumstances for West Coast in the first month. But Port Adelaide got 50 points down against Carlton, decided to actually start playing. And uh, to their credit, they ran it really, really deep, nearly won the game in the dying stages. And for that, you'd have to think there's probably a bit of a, a bit more confidence going into this game. Maybe fatigue will play a factor. I'm not too sure. I think they're coming off a six-day break, whereas West Coast will have an eight-day break. The interesting thing thing between these two teams is the ruck battle because Nat Nui's out, Lysett's out. So you got Sam Hayes, a fairly unproven ruckman, let's say the least, coming up against you know, what I presume will be Bailey Williams and, and Hugh Dixon for West Coast. So it's going to be a fairly neutral ruck battle. You'd probably say Hayes has a slight advantage there, but uh, I am relieved as a West Coast fan that it's not Lysett. So with Ollie Wines coming back into the side, uh, Port Adelaide, their clearance game has been really good this year. That's the one facet of their game where they've been consistently strong. Coming up against an underdone Eagles midfield who got uh, absolutely annihilated last week against Sydney. We're really, really poor. I find this really, really hard to pick, and I think I'm going to back in my beloved Eagles here for an upset win. We've never lost at Adelaide Oval to Port Adelaide. And while that doesn't necessarily mean much in this game, I just have a feeling they're going to come out and play well. And uh, we're probably going to be a frustrating team like that this year. Port Adelaide, on the other hand, are desperate for a win. Could easily see them winning this game. So I think, I think I'm going to tip the Eagles in an upset here by eight points. But I do acknowledge that if I was a neutral here, I'd probably go Port Adelaide. So there's a bit of bias here, but I believe in my Eagles. Fremantle then play Carlton in probably one of the uh, more interesting fixtures of this round, at least in my opinion. These two sides have a uh, funny little battle, uh, particularly amongst the fans. And I think it's because Carlton notoriously break Fremantle hearts consistently um, and uh, have the wood over them in some respects. Fremantle have built momentum nicely. Um, they've, I think they've finally found a bit of a groove against Essendon in the second half where they finally put some dominance on the scoreboard. That's something they've really struggled with this year. With Matt Tabernet coming off a seven goal performance as well, I think they'll go into this game with a fair bit of belief and I do think it's genuinely winnable. And Carlton are so hard to assess because they're playing halves of games where they look like you know premiership quality almost and then the second half of the game they pretty much go to sleep. That's happened n numerous times this year. So there's something to be said for if Carlton don't get a big lead in this game, would Fremantle run over the top of them? Maybe, maybe. This is a 50-50. I'm struggling to tip it, but I think I'm going to have to go with Carlton. I could see Fremantle winning this, but Carlton just have a knack for beating Fremantle. And uh, I think I think they're going to learn, hopefully, from their last quarter fade-outs in the last few games, and I think they'll win this by 15 points. Next, you have North versus Geelong at uh, Bell Reeve down in Tasmania there. North getting annihilated by the Bulldogs. Uh, last week by 68 points on Good Friday and uh, overall haven't shown too many good signs other than uh, you know a, a close effort against the Swans which admittedly is a very very good effort. Geelong on the other hand have been uh, a little up and down this year going down to Hawthorne on Easter Monday and what was a very good game but again I think I uh, have to res pay respect to the quality that Hawthorne can demonstrate this year as well. So North can be tricky to play down at Belle Reeve. I think they have a, a fairly good record there and the, the conditions down there can be tough for, for visiting teams. But I feel like Geelong just generally get a hold of North Melbourne. I, I'm not really looking too much into the stats when I say that, but I remember a game recently where they kept them to about one goal eight. Was that the score North Melbourne scored? I think it was one of their lowest scores ever. Look, on that basis, I, it's hard to tip Geelong losing this game, to be honest. It's... There is a chance, but I just don't think so. So I'm going to say Geelong win this by 33 points. Gold Coast versus Brisbane at Metricon Stadium. The Q Clash. Uh, I can't remember. Is that even called that anymore? I don't know. I think it is. Gold Coast uh, coming off a four-goal loss against St Kilda. Respectable effort away from home against a team that is uh, proving pretty good this year, St Kilda. So, look, they're building okay. They're building sort of in a slow, linear 
fashion Gold Coast, but they're coming up against a very experienced and battle-hardened side against Brisbane, who shook off a very plucky Collingwood at the Gabba on Thursday night. So what's that? That's a nine or 10 day break for the Brisbane Lions here. Brisbane don't really drop games too often. I can't really imagine Gold Coast winning this game. I think it's probably the most simple tip this round, which means I've probably just jinxed them. And uh, and the uh, Gold Coast will probably win, but I, I think I think Brisbane's going to win by at least forty five points. Anzac Day Eve now Richmond versus Melbourne at the MCG. Uh, Richmond going down to Adelaide by nineteen points last week, but again I don't know if I l- bother reading into Richmond's form anymore. It's just so up and down. And in, fa- in fact, if they've come off uh, maybe a disappointing loss the previous week, I'm more inclined to tip them this week. But I've tipped them about one from five this this year as well. So. Not really sure how to get a good read on Richmond, but again, how can you really tip against Melbourne? I guess you could argue the longer Melbourne keeps winning, the more likely they are to lose. So uh, there is a possibility that they drop this game, but there is a bit of spectacle about Anzac Eve. I think it'll be a big crowd, and as such, I can't see Melbourne not showing up. Do you know what I mean? So I think Melbourne I think Melbourne are obviously a much better side, and it's hard to, uh, to not tip them. They will win this game by, let's call it 32 points. Hawthorne versus Sydney now at Launceston, one of the two Anzac Day games. Uh, This is a tricky one. This is a really tricky one. I don't believe these two sides have played in Tassie, uh, certainly not recently. Hawthorne, very, very good. Easter Monday coming up against Geelong, beating them by 12 points. Very, very tough opponent. Sydney have also beaten Geelong this year, but Hawthorne, they can be a very, very good team. They can, they can beat some good teams this year. The way they move the ball from back half to the forward half is uh, very, very impressive. And I feel like there's a bit of a head-to-head situation here where I think Hawthorne have beaten Sydney in Sydney twice out of the last four times. I know this game's not in Sydney, but I, I like to look at head-to-head and see how teams match up against each other. And I think Hawthorne have a knack for beating Sydney and I think they beat them by 38 points in Sydney last year. But in my power rankings, I rated Sydney the third best team in the comp. Um, they are very, very good. Last week, I witnessed it firsthand where they came out and annihilated West Coast, and I don't really have any doubts that they're a very, very good team. I believe Buddy Franklin's still going to be out for this game, but we saw against the Eagles that doesn't really phase them. They dominated every facet of the game. The defense is working really well this year with uh, the McCartan brothers. I think Sydney's a better team, but I have an upset vibe about this game. I actually think Hawthorne could win this. I think, I think down in Tassie, Hawthorne will win this. Uh, and I don't know why, but I just think they'll win a thriller by six points. Essendon versus Collingwood at the MCG. The big Anzac Day game. Essendon sitting one and four at 70% has been a pretty true reflection of um, how average they've been this year. And I think going down to Fremantle by seven goals has shown how far they've slipped and perhaps how far Fremantle have come a little bit. Uh, I'm inclined to think it's a bit of both. I think Fremantle have improved a bit and I think Essendon are are way off the mark and at the moment not looking anywhere near finals quality. And you contrast that with Collingwood who at times genuinely have looked finals quality and they responded well after a uh, disappointing loss against West Coast by going up to the Gabba and pushing Brisbane all the way, which is not an easy task. Dugowie came back into the side, kicked four goals and 21 possessions. There is always a chance for an Anzac Day upset. There is so often drama about this game. But I think if you tip it with your head, Collingwood have been comfortably better. So there's a chance Essendon pull a result out of nowhere, but I think if they do win this game, it truly would be pulling a result out of nowhere because Collingwood have been comfortably better. And I'm going to tip them by 27 points in this game. Although, again, I just have a funny little feeling Essendon will just make me look a bit silly there. But let's be real. Colin would have been much better. So there you have it, guys. That is my round six tips. As we look at the ladder, still one undefeated team and still one winless team. The Port Adelaide one, I'm not as confident about. I think, as I said, I'd probably be tipping Port if I wasn't a West Coast fan, but I have belief. And the one thing I've tried to do this year is be more optimistic on the Eagles. And I think we will win. I think we'll win. Maybe. (laughs) I don't know. That's more heart than head. Anyway, guys, hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, Appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you are. Let me know in the comments uh, your upset of the round. What would be my upset of the round? Well, I tipped Hawthorne to beat Sydney. I don't know if that's a a true upset. Uh, Essendon beating Collingwood is probably a genuine upset potential. Game of the round for me, potentially Fremantle versus Carlton at Optus Stadium. I think uh, that could be a ripper. But anyways, guys, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hope to see you stick around for the rest of the season. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.